Do you worry about your health and your finances? Do you have family stress? Does your job stress you out? Or does your lack of a job give you stress as well? Do you get irritated easily? Well, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the hidden secrets to reducing stress. And it's a big, big topic, I know, especially for everything that we've been through in the last few months. So I'm really excited that we'll be able to share some tips with you about how to reduce stress and how to do it naturally. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the causes of stress, some of the symptoms of stress that our body could be exhibiting that we may not even know are related to stress. We'll also have a very special guest, an expert in the industry of yoga to show us some stress reducing yoga postures and a whole flow on how to naturally reduce our stress. We'll also be dispelling the myths around yoga and some of the things that people think are connected to yoga and they actually are not. And we're going to be sharing a lot of tips to help to naturally reduce our stress. So it's going to be a great show. Hello, Norm. Hello, so great Dr. to be here. So great to be here with you. Absolutely. And I enjoyed last week's show about children's health, but I'm really looking forward to talking about stress because you know what? I think people are stressed out. Oh. For a variety of reasons, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, everything, you know, that's happened specifically in the last three months and people watching the news and, you know, really becoming inundated with all of this negativity and all of this fear. And I think some people have definitely handled it better than yes. others. And we'll talk a little bit about that and some of the tips and tricks that we're talking about in today's show. You know, if you haven't been using these within your lifestyle, then they may be easy things and easy transitions that you can add into what you do on a day-to-day -day basis to really help to minimize that stress. And it, it really is amazing how well some of these things can work and they're fairly simple. So that's the good news. I'll be taking notes for sure. And speaking yeah. of notes, by the way, you can leave your own comments and questions, suggestions and ideas in the comments section below. And be sure to like and subscribe and share this video with other family members and friends, people who are experiencing stress, which really is just about everybody I think we'll be talking about. And click that bell so you're always notified of the next The Dr. Janine Show coming up. So remember that you can also follow Dr. Janine on Instagram at Dr. Janine, D-O-C-T-O-R-J-A-N-I-N-E on Facebook and also TikTok too. Mm -hmm. Now we've all got stress in our lives. There's no question about it. But what, Dr. Jean, are some of the most common causes of stress? Well, what's so interesting, and did you know that studies have shown that people can have up to 50 stressful thoughts or events that go on in their mind in a day. Wow. And wow. I think on some days I probably have a lot more than that. I don't know about you, <laughs> yeah, but true. certainly in the last few months, I think that number would be even higher. I mean, this was this was tested back in 2016 or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I think definitely in world events in the last little while, I think that number would be double or maybe even triple that at least. And, you know, a stressful thought being something that isn't, when you're in a balanced state. So we typically don't stress about, you know, normal day-to-day -day things, but there's a lot of things that can happen and events can happen and they've actually been ranked. So again, this oh. is a few years back, but the Harvard School of Public Health actually did a nationwide poll and that they found that the number one cause of people thinking and being stressed uh, was related to the fear or having, and they're going through illness and disease. So health reasons sure. was one of the number one causes for feeling stress. And I think it's a good good that we're doing the Dr. Jean show yeah. and it's all about health. Yeah. And that's why it's so important, you know, that, that we pay attention to our health and of course from a natural perspective. Mm -hmm. Number two on the last on the list was death of a loved one. Sure. So that that's understandable. But for you know the the health reasons being top of the list, I didn't realize that myself. I mean, when I was doing the research for for today's show, I th I thought death of a loved one would be number one, and it, and it wasn't. And it was actually almost double. So when they did it on a graph, it was almost double um, hmm. the the amount of stress from the health reasons as opposed to the death of a loved one. Yeah. So goes to show you that people do stress a lot about their health and, and lack of health and mm -hmm. right and not feeling well so interesting number three on the list was work-related stress yeah oh so sure <laughs> I think a lot of people can maybe relate to that except for here of course I of just course. want to be clear on that yes because <laughs> we have yeah, yeah no stress 
of course. <laughs> uh, tip yeah. number four is life changes or transitions happening. So moving would be an example, and that's that's you know sure. way up there, high on the list. As well as number five is family stress. Mm -hmm. So family stress, we know, you know, in a lot of a lot of circumstances, there's a lot of family stress. And number six on the list is relationship stress. Okay. So in my mind, I think, you know, a lot of people would have thought that relationship stress would have been higher on the list. But right. again, we have to think health and why it's so important and why I always am an advocate of taking care of your health. Yes. Um, and, and that's why my tip for reducing stress is to be preventative, be proactive about your health. Do everything that you can naturally to take care of your health so that you don't have to be stressed about it, right? So as long mm. as we're preventing getting sick or running down our immune system or you know being proactive about the stresses in our life and being healthy healthy diet and exercise as long as we're being proactive and preventative then we may not have to worry about those stresses of illness and things because we didn't manifest them in the first place hmm. so if we think that stress is just a normal part of our lives that we have yeah. to accept every day but we're not acknowledging it what are some of the symptoms of stress well, the first one is, that I would say is probably poor sleep. So, you know, oh. when you have something that's stressing you out and you either wake up really early in the morning because you just can't sleep and that thing is going through your mind yes. and because of that stress and it, it and it, what I have learned over the years is that that's actually a protective mechanism. So historically, um, and from the animal perspective, that if you are awoken early from your sleep in the early morning hours, that was for the ability to, for you to wake up and solve a problem. So it's, it's in our biology. Wow. As that, but imagine, okay, that's okay. Once in a blue moon, that happens. You've got a stressful event. That actually happened to me today. I was stressed about something. I woke up really early. I went down to the computer, did my research, and then I was like, and I did a bit of yoga. Yeah, good. <laughs> so good. when we talked to our special guest today, <laughs> she'll be very happy about that. <laughs> but I did a bit of yoga, got me grounded and centered again, and then I, I could go. Out. But had I not done that, had I not gotten up and dealt with that, then maybe tonight when I go to bed, I would have had the same issue. I would True. have had to wake up early again. And that's that's one of my tips, again, about dealing with your stress is to deal with it in the moment. If something's yeah. stressing you out and you're not processing something in a healthy way, then then hmm. deal with it in the moment and, and use some of the tips in today's show to help you to alleviate that stress so that it doesn't have to then prolong itself. Because poor sleep, we know, we've talked about in other shows, sure. affects our ability to, to detoxify it affects our ability for our, our, our organs to gen regenerate when we're sleeping yeah. it affects our beauty and our skin yep. so we have to we have to get that restful sleep so that's that's one symptom of stress another symptom of stress would be dietary changes so either you have a little bit more appetite so some people do the stress eating thing which we've talked about in a previous episode when we talk about sugar addiction. Yeah. But some people go the other way. When they're stressed out, they can't eat. Okay. So there could be some weight loss there. So that, that could be concerning as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Because, of course, we know that we have to, you know, eat and to sustain. But for a lot of people who are overeating, this could be a problem. Yes. Right? So this is Mr. Fat. What does that mean? What is Mr. So, fat? Well, what? Mr. F this is what five pounds of fat looks like. Okay. So for anybody who's lost five pounds of fat, or anybody or has gained five or double this for 10 pounds, triple this, 15 pounds, I mean, this is a good visual. It's a lot. It is. It's a lot of weight. And as much as we think, oh, you know, losing five pounds, it's that's a task to get this five pounds off. So it's it's important to know that stress is very much related to our, our waistline and yeah. our cortisol levels. So it's important to make sure that we find the balance and you know, take care of our adrenal glands. That's where our stress hormones are created to take care of that so that we don't have to pack on Mr. Fat when, yeah. when we don't need it, obviously. Wow, that's a big one. Another symptom of stress would be um, changes in exercise patterns. So some people, when they're stressed out, they actually will over-exercise and do a lot of exercise so it's as an outlet for the stress. So there's a happy medium of a balance there. And then some people will become more sedentary and you know have, have less activity because they're stressed out. 
Um, another symptom of stress would be increased sleep. So some people that are really, you know, really stressed out and maybe going towards a more depressive type of, mm -hmm. of uh, behavior um, may sleep a lot more. They just can't get up in the morning. And that would be, you know, if you have a loved one, certainly in your family that you recognize that this is happening, you mm -hmm. definitely, you know, reach out to them mm -hmm. and, and help them and see how you can help maybe with, you know, deal with some of those, those symptoms of stress. And another one, another symptom of stress would be increased watching of television. Oh, okay, really? So this goes hand in hand. So think about everybody who was home during the pandemic yep. and binge watching a lot of programs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? Sure. And that was a way, an outlet for dealing with stress. So that, that would be... That would be one of them. Another one with the kids is the video game, not even just kids, but older adults as well who play the video games. That is an outlet for stress. So if a little bit's okay, but too much of anything we know um, is not healthy. Yeah. So my tip for dealing with some of the symptoms of stress is a really simple one. And this is one of the things that I love. Essential oil okay. of lavender. Mm -hmm. So lavender is um, multifunctional, essential oil which is relatively safe you know in terms of essential oils for for most people and it's one of the only essential oils that you can actually use undiluted and may I thank you oh I love that it is just love that so, so nice. lovely and very calming. So what you can do is, and I'll actually do it right now, is I'll, I've done this a few times today, yeah. is put just a, a couple drops on, and this is how I usually do it. So go ahead if you want to do this. I have a few drops on your, on your wrist. wrist. Okay. And then what I do is I'll inhale it a little bit, and then I bring it right around my neck, and then wherever I think... In, so in the pulse points here, you can so put it nice. too. And it's just, you can do this a couple times a day. Some Guys people, too? I mean, yeah, absolutely, yeah, okay, why not? Yeah. It's just so calming. Yeah. And another thing you can do is to put a few drops on your pillow at nighttime. So if you know, you've got insomnia yeah. and your sleep is affected by your stress, this is yeah. a great way. Mm, I like that. This is great for pets as well. They, yeah. they, again, you have to check with your vet and make sure that this is something that's recommended and you don't want them ingesting it. But right, it's right. great for the children as well. So a really a, an easy tool that you can implement. You can put it into an, um, a vaporizer into the room so that you have the essence of lavender and it mm -hmm. really it goes a long way. And it's not just because it smells pretty and it's great. It actually has been <laughs> proven. So I have a study that actually shows that the pharmacological mechanisms of lavender, which is lavandula and gustifolia, essential oil on the central nervous system and dealing with the serotonin um, receptors, which is you know, such an interesting thing to, to say that yes, it actually has been studied in the literature to, to find the pharmacological effects of something as simple as, you know, again, what Mother Nature gives us. And she gives us so many tools, and yet we just don't always know how to use them. So that's, that's a great tip to be able to relieve stress, to do it naturally, helps to re relax the nervous system and the central nervous system and doesn't really have the negative side effects, which are, unfortunately associated with a lot of the conventional methods of, you know, dealing with stress. That's a good one. I really like that one. What about the aging signs of stress? You know what I'm yeah. thinking of? Or some of the politicians you see on TV, isn't it so true that they age, they look different going into office as compared to when they come out of office, maybe four yes. or maybe eight years later or what have you? There's lots of examples. Oh, absolutely. And this is something you can see, you know, if you're watching the television over yeah. those years, it's dramatic. Yeah. And yes, even, you know, studies have shown, so a study was done in mice um, because it's it's one of those old wives' tales, oh, you're going to get gray hair, don't you? are giving me more yeah. gray hair, right? When yeah. you're stressed out and you say this to, <laughs> to yeah. people. And, but it's actually been studied. So in the Nature um, journal, they found that there was something called the hyperactivation of symp sympathetic nerves, which is part of our autonomic nervous system, drives the depletion of melanocyte stem cells. And this was specifically um, the hair graying results from the activation of these sympathetic nerves. So that's the fight or flight response that you may have heard of in the autonomic nervous system that had an influence on the melanocyte stem cell niche and so what that's saying is that yes in times of stress when the when they stressed out these poor mice they turned gray 
and, and wow. that's cause and effect, right? And I know we're not mice as humans, but often we use mice as, as examples. Um, certainly we don't want to do this on too many humans because yeah. they wouldn't be too happy for stressing them out <laughs> and giving them gray hair in a study, right? <laughs> right? So as an example, and we know, I mean, anybody that I've seen that's gone through a very stressful period, then yeah, they do gray very quickly because of the stress. So it is in the literature. Another one is the aging process. So people that have been, you know, they lost a loved one in their family and they've gone through, or maybe job stress they've gone through a very difficult period of time you yeah. can see it in their face it looks often that they've aged you know 10 15 years all because of the stress so that that would be another example one of the lesser known um, signs of stress would be TMJ so do you have you heard of TMJ yes so when people get the the jaw aches yeah. and clicking yeah. in the jaw sometimes clenching at night yeah. um, which can be related to suppressed anger but also stress oh, wow. and so that clenching can be related yeah to, to one of the symptoms and, and signs of stress so definitely if that's your body is telling you that you've got some of these things happening, then absolutely you want to, you know, first of all recognize it, but then try to do something about it. Another one would be high blood pressure. Okay. So that's definitely related to stress. And this is something when I used to see my patients and I would take their blood pressure, of course, wearing my white coat and giving the, the blood pressure test always the first time that I would take the blood pressure, it would be very high. And that's just because of white coat syndrome. That's what it's called when you're fearful of the doctor with the white, white coat. White coat syndrome. Yeah. Oh, I like that. And that's so true. what I would do is I would take the blood pressure again um, after they've relaxed for a few moments. And sure enough, the blood pressure would come down, you wow. know, quite quite a lot, um, you know, up to 10, 15 points. Makes sense though. It does, right? So we have to watch our stress. Another symptom of stress would be acne. So wow. at any age, so we think of, you know, the teenagers and the younger kids with hormonal changes that that would be, you know, in that age group, but not necessarily. It could be even adults will break out with acne sure. because of the stress. So my tip, to help with, you know, the acne and some of the other symptoms of stress would be always to detoxify the body. So getting rid of those internal toxins, whether you do it with your diet and cleaning up the diet, getting a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. If you choose to go with herbal medicines, you know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you've got questions about that, we're going to have links at the bottom of today's episode to, to, you know, some herbal medicines that can help with that. But let, once in a while, do a clean out. I usually say at least four times a year to do a full body detox, get those toxins out, and that will help to alleviate the stress on your organs oh. so that you can better handle some of the other stresses that are in your life. And sometimes when that toxicity level and that load builds up, then we're less able to deal with the everyday stresses. So that, that's my tip for, for helping with some of those symptoms of stress. It's so nice to know that Dr. Janine will be online during the show to answer your comments, your questions, uh, subject matter ideas that you have. So leave those comments in the section, uh, comment section below. And remember to like and subscribe and share the video and click the bell too so you never miss another episode. And speaking of other episodes, you can check out previous episodes on YouTube if you would like to see what you've missed or go over some of the other things that we're referring to, for example, even in this show. And also, be sure to follow Dr. Janine on Instagram, on Facebook, also on TikTok, at Dr. Janine. That's D-O-C-T-O-R-J-A-N-I-N-E. Every Monday, 7 o'clock, with a naturopathic doctor and answers or questions with natural answers, really, with the Dr. Janine Show. So, I'm assuming that all this stress can really have a serious effect on our health, right? Am I, am I correct in assuming that? Oh, absolutely. And it can lead to more serious problems. So when we talk about cardiovascular disease, so certainly mm. it is statistically significant. Um, and there's been epidemiological studies that have been done on the rate of heart attacks on what day of the week that it happens. And it's typically on a Monday. Wait a minute, typically on a Monday, an actual day of the week? Absolutely, and why is that? And there's a huge mm -hmm. spike on Mondays because it's the beginning of the work week. And so typically with the stresses, we know stress and cardiovascular disease and having a, a heart attack is definitely correlated. Mm -hmm. And that stress, yeah, it's correlated. So again, as one of the stress-related health issues, it's so important that we deal with the stress first. It wasn't 
necessarily the cardiovascular disease. Yes, it could have been, you know, the arteries could have been blocked because of stress sure. and poor diet and lack of exercise and all those other, you know, cofactors that go along with, with developing the, the actual MI or myocardial infarction, but it, yeah, it was the stress in the end that was pulled the trigger to develop the heart attack. So we have to be mindful of these things. And that's why, you know, all the tools that we're sharing today um, in the show are so important to be able to deal with the stress. Do you think being on Monday is partly because of what I'm doing Saturday night <laughs> and uh, Sunday? the hangover effect. Right? And then Monday I'm up for work or up earlier than I have been in the last two days, typically? What do you think? It may be. It may Maybe be part of, yeah, okay. and the lack of sleep, which yeah. we talked about, and then that's, you know, then the worried mind that maybe you can't sleep early mm. on, the, on the Monday morning because you know that, you know, you've got things that are happening and you've got to get things done on that Monday. So, right. yeah, it's, it's a very, you know, very common thing. So, again, to be cognizant of that and to really take care of yourself, maybe prepping on Sunday to be ready for the work week so that, you know that that you hmm. go into it as as gently and, or as gently and as easily as possible absolutely another one of the stress related health issues would be stress disorder so the anxiety the panic attacks and this is something that you know in my patients over the years is they think that they're having a heart attack which is you know so disheartening but you know for the fact that sometimes there's there's little to turn to. It's not like um, the medications are, are the answer because they can, you know, really sort of cut you <laughs> down in terms of your overall energy. Yeah. Um, so, th so this is a huge concern. And again, I, I don't think I've ever seen a patient who just sort of started to develop panic attacks and, and nervousness and anxiety and anxiety disorder, it was building up right. over the years. And because the stress wasn't managed in, in micro steps during, right. you know, during the process of that surmounting and building up, because it wasn't dealt with, that's how it gets to the big panic attack. So this is why it's so important if anybody's watching today, right, and they're listening and they're they're wondering about how to how to do this, um, recognize these things in yourself perhaps that those little increments of stress are building up and you don't want to get to that point of having the panic attack. Hmm. Another one that's a stress-related health issue is, are the eating disorders. So definitely overeating is one when we talked about Mr. Fat, yeah. <laughs> right? Mr. Fat. And putting on that extra weight, but also under eating. So when you're stressed out and not eating, so they could both be equally as concerning for the overall health and always finding the balance in our body. Another one would be uh, the low levels. So the accumulation of the low levels of stress, so whether that's muscle aches, so people who, who have a lot of muscle aches, that, that could be an indication that that stress is built up. And this is one of the things we'll ask our special guest about today, about yeah. the muscle aches and the pains and things. And um, you know, with yoga and how yoga can really you know, maybe help to alleviate some of these as much as we think that we're doing yoga. And this is something that we'll ask our special guest, um, who's coming up in just a moment, which I'm excited about. Yeah, but me too. That, that the yoga can really be helpful at, at reducing that overall stress in the body and then helping with the, the muscle aches and pains. Of course, headaches as well can be very much related to stress. IBS types of symptoms as well. So in the gut, the irritable bowel syndrome is very much stress related and um, definitely Definitely the gas and the bloating and all those symptoms in the GI tract can be related to that stress. So I have a tip. Okay, yeah. So a tip for alleviating and to for reducing the stress in the gut. So with the IBS symptoms, and it's called deep belly breathing. So we're gonna put our hands on our guts and we're going to help to relax the something called the enteric nervous system. So this is part of the autonomic nervous system. So there's a branch of parasympathetic and sympathetic. Parasympathetic is the more relaxed state. And we wanna be in this more relaxed state when we're digesting our food, when we're not in that relaxed state. So let's say we're the grab and go, we're stressed out, we're eating and having a heated argument with someone, we're not relaxed, we're not centered, well then we're in the sympathetic part of our nervous mm. system, which is the fight or flight response. And when we're in that mode, then all the blood flow isn't going to digestion, the blood flow is going elsewhere. 
it's going to our heart to help for us to run away from right. that stress, right? Yeah. That's the part of the, the sympathetic nervous system. Yes. We're also not secreting our digestive enzymes. So we have to be we have to be relaxed when we're eating. And no wonder people get IBS and all these symptoms of the gas and bloating in the stressed out state is mm -hmm. because that, that blood flow is not going and those those enzymes are not going where they're meant to into the into our digestive tract to help with digestion. So we're going to center in on that. So we're going to put our hands on our bellies. Yes. And we're just going to close our eyes gently. We're just going to take a few really deep breaths. And with the intention of helping our enteric nervous system and with belly breaths, meaning that as we inhale, we allow our belly to expand. As we exhale, we allow our belly to fall. And just allowing for that parasympathetic nervous system to kick in and it's that more relaxed state so that we can help with digestion and this is for anybody who has difficulty with digestive issues any type of digestive issues I can almost guarantee that this is part of it that stressed out response and this can really help people without medication you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to pay any money you're just right. you're breathing yeah. but with the intention of helping to relax that enteric nervous system in the gut you do that for as long as you can I mean ideally you do 15 to 20 deep slow breaths yeah. with focusing that energy here it can do wonders and I've seen this in my patients like turn things around in terms of their IBS symptoms really? yeah in as little as a few days Amazing. Just of because of that mindfulness and being able to center in on that so I want everybody to try it if they're struggling you know with with these symptoms of stress especially in the digestive tract that would be a great tip to do that. Hey, what's next? So I'm so excited. We have a special guest today. Good, yeah. And Kamel Alcide is a yoga instructor. She has been practicing for over 10 years. She's an expert in the field of yoga and yoga therapy. She's had over a thousand hours of training and doing <coughs> yoga therapy, which is phenomenal. And she really is someone that is very well versed in using yoga as a tool to really help, whether it's her students or herself, which she's going to share, um, to help with reducing stress and to really, you know, connect that mind, body, spirit connection connection and Kamal is going to share some you know some yoga postures with us so a whole sequence but also she'll be dispelling some of the myths around yoga because people have misconceptions I think about yoga and that's something that we'll definitely be talking about so I, I can't wait to welcome her in. So, Kamal, we're so honored to have you here on the Dr. Janine Show. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Janine, for having me here. I'm happy to be here, too. Good, good, good. So, we've got a ton of questions for you, so we're going <laughs> to... It'll be tag team. Yeah, okay, Norm and right. I. We'll gang up on her and tag <laughs> with all these questions about yoga. Okay. Because she can handle it, because she's very yeah. zen in yoga. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, how can yoga help to reduce stress? Um, well, when we think of the mind body spirit connection um, if you affect the physical body so let's say when we practice yoga we're stretching muscles we're moving things um, we always say that the issues are in the tissues mm -hmm. and so we're stretching and releasing some of those issues and therefore reducing our stress okay so I have a question so let's say someone comes into your yoga studio and they're complaining of you know different muscle pains and would that be something that you would say oh that's a red flag you know that may be related to stress not that you're going to judge them or anything but that would that be sort of a telltale sign that there's some stress going on in their life <laughs> yeah absolutely I mean um, a lot of stress r related um, injuries or tension is as a result of, of the mind, like what we perceive to be stressful, yes. which then manifests in our body, right? We're holding on to tension and it shows up in the neck, it shows up in the shoulders, in the back. And so would yoga be something that, that helps? Like have you seen that, that it's very helpful for relieving that stress and that tension? Yeah, it is. Uh, again, going back to the mind-body connection, um, even in working out, like 
that connection, experiencing it, is not exclusive to just people who practice yoga. Right. Uh, if someone is working out or engaging in a, an activity that brings them joy, then they automatically experience that, that mind-body connection, right? They, yeah. They're exercising, they're doing what they love, and then they, they feel good, right? right? And so it's the same thing with yoga, um, except that we're adding in the, the spiritual part. Yes. So tell us about that. Okay. So uh, <laughs> when we hear when we hear uh, spirit in yoga, we often like things often get blurry. People get confused. They're not quite sure what to believe. Yeah. And so spirit comes from the Latin word uh, spirare, which means to breathe. Mm. And yoga is breathing. Like yes, that's yeah. that's the practice, breathing through the postures, breathing through the asana. And that's what yeah. really helps to um, to bring the entire thing together. They say that the breath is the bridge between the mind and the body. I love right? That. So yeah. by breathing and focusing on your breath, you're engaging the mind and then you're bringing the mind down to the level of the body. Yes. Right? And so everything makes sense. Yeah. Wow, I love now, that. I know, Dr. Janine, you practice yoga yourself too, but yeah. I mean, is it really just though for primarily flexible people? You know, do I, is, <laughs> do I have to be able to touch my toes? She's uh, giving you that look, really I don't know. <laughs> I actually do hear that comment a lot. Yeah. Um, do I have to be flexible right. to practice yoga? I often think of the analogy should people who have green thumbs? only on plants, right? <laughs> Not really. Exactly. So, some people are more intuitive in taking care of their plants, yeah. right? And so they know the right amount of water to give their plant. They know the, the right, uh, right amount of light. And for yoga, it's the same thing. You have to learn, right? You have to learn to become flexible, both physically and mentally, the same yeah. way someone who's not intuitive about plants has to learn like what what to give their plant in order for it to thrive that's a great that's yeah. a great way to look at it yeah. right i never thought of it that way have you norm no i never thought of it that way at all because whenever <laughs> i see people uh performing or practicing yoga um I, it always seems like there's a lot of flexibility involved you really have to be able to and that but i think it's great i envy that and i didn't know if that came from doing more yoga i guess it does right the more you do it the more flexible you become exactly so those yeah. people you see are probably people who have been practicing for a while yeah. or people who are just mm. naturally flexible based on their constitution. Right. Right? Yeah. But do you find, though, I mean, this is, I'm answering my own question, but certainly the flexibility, the longer that you practice yoga, certainly the more flexible you come, not just in body, but I've experienced in my own life mentally yeah. flexible, right? Absolutely. Spiritually flexible. Absolutely. I mean, isn't that what we all want, what we should attain to? And yoga could be a great tool, perhaps. I'm putting words in your mouth, but it could be a great tool, right, to help to to find the balance. When we talk in the show, Norm, as yep. you know, in our show, we always talk about mind-body-spirit connection. And for people that have thought, oh, no, yoga's not for me, we'd like to dispel that myth, right, um, that maybe it's something that would be a great tool to use for people to, who don't know where to start to find that balance between mind, body, and spirit. Agreed. Yeah. And I think most people, people come for that reason, for the flexibility. And I think yeah. later on there's a shift from what this can do for me physically yeah. um, to how I'm feeling mentally. My thoughts are more clear. Yes. Um, I'm more calm. I'm, I'm able to experience stressful situations with ease. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And would you think, or have you encountered the fact, this is something that I personally experienced um, in the past, that there's a misconception that yoga is some kind of spiritual religion? Yeah. And his approach to yoga was that he dealt with the mental, like people's mental states, mm. right? So allowing people to shift from the obsession of their thoughts 
right, and move into their bodies in sort of, of, of separating um, what's going on in the mind and having it like become real. Right. And so even his, his prodigy, we, ha we have BKS Iyengar and uh, Devi from the 1900s, they didn't Also, yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's it's so fascinating to me because it's like any subject. The more you delve into it, there's there's really so much to, to learn and I think appreciate. Now I have a complete new appreciation for yoga, which I love. Mm -hmm. I've loved anyway. So right. that's fantastic. Um, so I know that in preparation for today's show that you were able to put together a specific sequence of the postures for us to help with reducing stress. So we're going to take a look at that in just a second. Um, but yeah, is it is it possible? So that's my question. Is it possible to use yoga with a specific sequence to be able to, you know, in the moment, if you're having may experience uh, pains in their shoulders, another person may not. Um, but just in terms of the sequence that we created, it, it sort of was created taking in all of those possibilities of where people could experience tension. Okay. And so the idea is always to release the accumulation of tension that the stress has caused in the body. Yeah. Okay. So fantastic. that's where the is that where an emotional release would happen? Is that what that would be? That could definitely be oh. that as well. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about men too, yeah. because okay. you know I, th I I don't know I'm not speaking on behalf of all men. That is for sure. <laughs> but I go to the gym more and I pump iron and do weights and all that sort of thing, and. Uh, by that. I had no idea that's what was happening in my body. But do you find generally a lot of men, stereotypically at least, uh, would not attend your class or don't come to yoga as much because they don't understand it. They think, oh, that's a woman thing. <laughs> what do you think? I think previously that definitely was uh, the sentiment uh, from men. But I've been teaching for six years now and more and more I'm seeing uh, male presence in the classes. Um, I think naturally there will always be disparity in terms of who's coming to the class because I think there are more women in the population than there are men. Um, but I think over time that gap is being Uh, you know, so graciously put together for our viewers to really help with decreasing stress. Okay. So I'm so glad that we have Kamel here today. She is going to be showing us a 
flow for stress and I'm going to be asking a few questions during the flow to ask right from the expert Kamel. So hi Kamel, so great to have you hi, here. Dean. Hi Dr. Janine, thank you so much for having me here. Oh this is fantastic. So I know that you put this together for us, a flow for helping with reducing stress. So yeah, I'll just let you do your thing. I'm, I might interject and ask a few questions as you're doing the flow, but yeah, I can't wait to get to it. Amazing. All right, so we'll start in child's pose. So bring the big toes to touch, open up your knees, and then stretching the arms forward, bring your chest, your forehead down to your mat. And then we'll just take a few moments here to check in with self. Perhaps observing where you feel any tension in your physical body. And allowing your awareness to shift to your breath. Notice the air coming in through your nose and out through your nostrils. And perhaps even breathing into those places or spaces in your body where you feel the existence of any tension. Take one more breath in and exhale out through your nose. Good, we're starting to move here, pressing to your palms. Inhale, shifting your body forward, lower your pelvis down, legs are straight, and then pushing into your palms. Great space as you expand the front of your body and just hold it right here. Taking a breath in through your nose. And exhale, retracting your shoulder blades back. You take one more breath in, and then bend your elbows, slowly lower your belly, your chest, your forehead down to your mat, and pause. And then push back into your palms. Inhale, peel your belly, your chest, your forehead off your mat. Come back into that seal pose. So it's just like upward facing dog, but the only difference is your thighs are connected. And then curl your toes from here. Exhale, lift your hips, your hip bones, your tailbone to downward facing dog. Now adjusting your stance here, you can bring your feet closer or wider and it really depends on your body and what feels more comfortable for you. Ground down through your hands and your feet. Now inhale, lift your heels off your mat and take little steps to the top of your mat between your hands. Now inhale, lift halfway up, and just pause and feel the space in between the vertebrae of your spine. And then exhale, fold, bring your belly to your thighs. Grounding down through the bottoms of your feet, inhale, soften the knees, lift the torso, the arms, wave up to the ceiling. Lift your chest, and then exhale, sweep your arms behind your back, interlock your fingers. You take a breath in, again, pull the shoulders back. And then exhale, knees are soft, fold forward. Move your knuckles and arms away from your body. Relax the back of your neck. And inhale, palms come to your shins, lift halfway up. And then exhale, hands to your mat, step your left leg back, bend your right knee. Inhale, lifting your torso and arms up to warrior one. Keep pressing into the bottoms of your feet as you rise. Exhale, bend your elbows out to the sides. Again, we're focusing on lifting your chest up forward and back. Good, inhale, arms come back up. Exhale, release your hands down. Step your back foot forward. Inhale, lift halfway up. Just a little reset. And then exhale, fold, step back with your right leg. This time, bending your left knee, adjust your feet. Inhale, lift your torso, wave your arms up. And then exhale, bend your elbows out to the sides, lift your chest. Inhale, take your arms up strong. And then exhale, release your hands down. Step your right leg to meet your left at the top of your mats. Good, inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Pressing through the bottoms of your feet, inhale, rise up tall. 
And then exhale, bring your hands to your heart center in prayer. Stepping your left foot all the way to the back of your mat, pivot your entire body to face the long side of your mat. And then inhale, open up your arms. Again, we're focusing on creating space and releasing tension that accumulates in the chest. And then exhale, twisting over toward your right foot. Hold it here. Inhale, deepen the twist by reaching your right arm up. Exhale, look down, release. Then inhale, come all the way back up, legs engaged, chest lifts. Exhale, twist towards your opposite foot, and grab onto the outside here. And then inhale, twisting a little bit deeper as you gaze to your fingertips. Exhale, look down and release. Inhale, come all the way back up, arms open wide. And then exhale, hands to your heart. Pivot to the top of your mat. Step your left foot to meet your right. Big breath in. Take your arms up to the sky. And then exhale. Fold forward like a waterfall. Release your hands down. Releasing tension in your neck here. Maybe nod your head yes a few times. Good. Now inhale. Lift halfway up. And then exhale. Fold. Hands down. Step back to downward facing dog. Take a breath here. Breathe out through your nose. Let's take one more breath, staying engaged. Exhale out through your nose. And inhale, just lift your heels, bend your knees, look forward and step your feet to meet your hands. Come all the way down to sit. And adjust your body so you're coming all the way on your back. Bring your ankles underneath your knees, arms beside your body, palms facing down. Now press into your feet. Inhale, lift your hips up to the sky. Simultaneously, take your arms overhead. Your knuckles touch the floor above you. And then exhale, lower your hips down, release your hands back beside you. Then we'll try that again. Just press into your feet. Inhale, lift up a little higher. Arms drift overhead. And then exhale, lower your hips and your arms back to your mat. Good. Now open up your knees out to the sides. Bring your big toes to touch. And just resting here, bring one palm to your belly, one palm to your chest. Reconnecting with your breath. Take two more cycles of breath. And bring your hands to the outsides of your thighs. Inhale, close your thighs in towards each other. And then exhale, pull your knees in towards your ribs. Just bringing your palms to the tops of your knees. Gently push your thighs away with your palms on the inhale. And then exhale, squeezing your thighs back into your body. Again, just bringing the spine back to neutral here. Inhale, gently push your thighs, your knees away. And then exhale to hug it in. Do that one more time for good measure. Inhale. And then exhale, squeeze. And now release your feet down to your mat. Stretch your left leg to the left corner of your mat. And then your right leg to the right corner of your mat. Take your arms beside you. And take about a minute here in this rest position we call Shavasana. Just allowing the integration of all the shapes in your body Noticing the effects in your physical body, in your mind. You may stay here for as long as you wish if you need an extra minute or two.
<sighs> that was so fantastic. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't want to interrupt you during the flow, but it was amazing. And I do have a few questions, but I feel so relaxed just watching the whole flow. I can't wait to try it myself, Yeah, which is great. Um, so I noticed a lot of the postures were very opening for the chest. How yes. would you relate that to helping with stress? Well, a lot of times when we're stressed, we find that uh, we tend to sort of curl in. Uh -huh. And so the idea of a practice for that purpose is to move the body in the opposite direction of the accumulation. So creating space in yes. your chest. Um, also in the flow, you notice that we did uh, forward folds with integrating the arms and shoulders. Yeah. So that was to release tension in the neck. Another place where we tend to hold, hold on. onto tension, yeah. Yeah. Uh, tension in the shoulders in the back as well. So the entire flow was designed um, with those problem areas in mind. Perfect, yeah. that's so amazing. And then the Shavasana at the end, I mean, if, if somebody had a couple minutes, you know, in a busy, hectic day, if they could find a place to do Shavasana, I mean, would that be something that would be recommended? Yeah, absolutely. Any opportunity uh, you, you find to lie down and and just slow down and connect with breath uh, will be very beneficial for that individual. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Wow, that was so nice. And I enjoyed watching so it. Nice. So yeah. it yes. was hard to, for me, because I, I love to practice yoga. <laughs> It's hard for me to sit in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> um, what you didn't see um, yeah. in the video as well was I was breathing really deeply, and you, I think you taught that. Yes. Um, you mentioned about the breath. The breath and connecting to the breath. Exactly. And so um, there were moments when I was playing with the retention of my breath. So okay. holding my breath on the inhale and then holding my breath on the exhale, that also helps to calm the nervous system. Um, when you hold on the exhale and yeah just to release release tension and stress from the body wow yeah fabulous yeah thank you so much for that because i know our viewers will really you know take that to heart and I'll, i'm going to do that flow myself knowing mm -hmm. that you know and in, in, and you don't need a lot of time and certainly would you recommend repeating those postures like you could do that sequence a few times back to back right yeah. if if people want to i'm just thinking for myself i'm going to watch it <laughs> once through and i'm going to rewind mm -hmm. and i'm going to yeah. watch it again um as a tool for myself if i have three minutes to Try hot yoga, what would be the benefit there? Um, there are several benefits to hot yoga. Uh, one of, and hot yoga is really when you practice yoga in a space that's between 90 degrees. Sometimes it can go up to 110 degrees. Fahrenheit, right? <laughs> 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 Just to clarify. Fahrenheit, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Not Celsius. <laughs> you know. yeah, Getting yeah. warm thinking <laughs> about that. Cook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, so the temperature varies depending on where you, where you go to practice. And the main reason why we, we practice hot yoga here is to mimic the, the climate or the temperature in India where yoga yes. emerged from. Oh. Yeah, makes sense. Right? And so the benefits are that, you know,
right. like exercise as well. Yeah. So those are the benefits. But I would say that hot yoga is not recommended for everyone. Right. Um, yeah. And people should really be mindful of their own um, like constitution, like and the things that they are dealing with from a health perspective right. before they, they go to a hot yoga class. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and I can attest to this because if I get overheated, I will get, it's almost like a sunstroke kind of headache. Yeah. So I've had to bring like an ice pack, <laughs> put it on my neck to calm and lower my core body temperature. Exactly. And that was to get me through, right? But I didn't want to stop practicing the hot yoga. But it's intense. I mean, for someone, and but every, I think, you've done a yoga class there's no um, judgment in, mm -hmm. in there shouldn't be any ways in a yoga class and whatever you your body needs in that moment you honor that and you and you take care of that for yourself and you don't have to feel so for people that are you know on on the fence oh should I try yoga I think it's important to share that you don't need to go to that extreme that people around you may be right mm -hmm. and if there's if it's an instructor led class, which I've done as well before, that the instructor's at the front of the class and you follow along or for people who do it um, by using, um, you know, the internet or YouTube or whatever to do their yoga videos. You don't have to go at that same pace or to that extent that, that the instructor is doing. So mm -hmm. it's a good tip. It's an Studies so with hot yoga and helping with glucose tolerance. So you know I'm all about watching the carbohydrates and spiking carbs. I don't like you know some of those high carb junk food kind of things. So yeah, so the hot yoga has been proven in in the literature to help with helping to balance, especially in overweight individuals, and the effect of the high temperature of yoga exercise in improving physical and mental well-being. So of course we're talking about stress today, the mental well-being of overweight, middle-aged and young women. So that, I mean, studies are showing that the hot yoga specifically has those benefits. And as you said, for the cardiovascular benefits as well, we know that heat does that when we talk, we'll be talking in a bit about the heat shock proteins and sauna and things. But really
Kim, H-O-T-Y-O-G-A-K-I-M, on Instagram. And uh, I have to look up your account myself to see what that's all about. But what's on your Instagram account? What do you, what do you post typically? Uh, myself in yoga poses. I have inspiration in my story, different yeah. clips of, of yoga classes. All right. I like that. Hot Yoga Kim <laughs> is where you'll find uh, Kamel on Instagram. Now, I wanted to ask you about meditation and if meditation is a component to yoga also. Yeah, um, meditation is actually one of the eight limbs of yoga. Um, so when we think of yoga, the idea of yoga is to bring the mind, the body, and spirit in harmony with its environment. And so there's different steps or stages uh, to attain that, that harmony. Um, and meditation is, I would say, the seventh, the seventh step. And when we say meditation, what we're really referring to is concentration. So meditation is a state of being, but concentration is what gets us to that state. So when, I, when we talk about concentration, I'm referring to the mind, like engaging the mind on something specific. Um, and in yoga classes, for example, we use breath meditations where we're just focusing on breathing. And so that engages the mind. You're moving away from that constant thinking and distraction, which can lead to stress, right. um, and just bringing you back into the present moment. So I know that there's different types of meditation. So you said the focused breath, probably for someone who wants to segue into meditation, that would be a great aspect, but we also have transcendental meditation, which is the most studied form of meditation. We have mantra meditation where someone will repeat like om and they keep saying. Oh, a, that's a mantra. Certain, okay. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So for some people, but the breath, as you said, which is a focused meditation, sometimes people will do a guided meditation as well, which would be like a visualization. So I know there's a lot of, you know, support. upper respiratory tract infection. So we know from a medical standpoint, absolutely. Mindfulness-based stress reduction helps with, um, you know, decreasing that stress response in an effective way. And as part of a yoga training session as well, another study is showing that the randomized controlled trial of mindfulness med meditation for generalized anxiety disorder has had some promising effects. And that's, I mean, stress, that's what we're talking about. So really using meditation as a tool to be able to combat the stress, I think is, is of utmost importance. And again, it's free, you don't have to, right? It's not overly, um, involved you've just If you've experienced this that um, people can leave a yoga class I've seen it before and my patients used to tell me oh, I did yoga and I was like so like they didn't come back mm -hmm. and ground themselves and they were like Ooh, like kind of like an out-of-body experience and not grounded and yeah had difficulties finding their way home because they just weren't grounded enough to to kind of 
yeah. do that. So they were in that bliss state. Yeah, <laughs> and so that can be a good, a good thing, but you want to <laughs> you want to be grounded. Um, also, that we found, you know, in the NIH, so has also, you know, done a variety, and we'll show this, share this in the links below, um, below this video. to be able to say so if we're helping someone today by watching this to, yeah. to really and you've got stress right and mm -hmm. somebody who's really struggling to utilize these um, tips that we're sharing today to be able to to decrease that stress response so that was a great show thank you so much Kamala it was such an honor to have you here I'm I'm so grateful that you were able to come and we could ask these questions and you really, you know, enlightened me even more. I thought I knew a lot about yoga, but I obviously do not and I have to learn more, but that was that was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. You're so welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. <laughs> so thank you everyone. Thanks for joining us today in this show all about is telling you and why it's so important to naturally start to decrease those stress levels. We also talked about some of those causes, so whether it's in your environment, in what's happening in your life. We also shared some tips with our special guest Kamel, who showed us, you know, a specific sequence, a yoga sequence to help with decreasing stress, opening up the heart and relieving that stress in the upper but also in the lower body. We learned about the breath and how that's the spiritual aspect of yoga and how that connects everything in terms of mind, body and spirit to help to de decrease that stress. You know, there is so much more to talk about and we will continue with more of this next week, by the way. We're going to be talking about herbs that can help with Say it right, circadian rhythm. We're going to find out what it actually is and how to say it and how it relates to stress. Seriously, we're going to be talking about saunas as well as cold exposure and how it can help and how it relates to stress. We'll talk about foods to avoid because you know we've always got recipes and foods and ingestion and things to eat and, the, and to talk about in every show and supplements that you can ha uh, take to help also. And Dr. Janine will also be sharing with us the Dr. J9 truth that we have in every show of the Dr. Janine Show for how to reduce stress. So make sure you like and subscribe and click that bell for future notifications of other shows coming up. Share the video too with family and friends who you know would love to see new ideas in how to address stress and learn about what yet again certainly and remember to follow Dr. Janine on Instagram and Facebook and also on TikTok at Dr. Janine that's D-O-C-T-O-R-J-A-N-I-N-E the full words there and we will see you next week. Well thank you so much Norm, thank you Kamel, it was thank such you. an honor to have you here as our guest and thank you everyone for watching. So again just to wrap up in the first part of our stress episode today we talked about the causes of stress, some of the symptoms that your body is showing you and the symptoms of stress that your body is manifesting. We also talked about different ways and some tips how to relieve stress and how to do it naturally. We had our special guest Kamel who is a yoga expert
and really important adjunct into what maybe you're already doing to help to relieve your stress and to really dispel some of the myths around yoga and why it is something that we can all do on a daily basis to really help to relieve that tension that our body may be holding on to. So thanks for joining us today and remember to always take care of your good health and do it naturally.